welcome back so last we have seen the mechanism of action mechanism of action of the cardiac glycosides so we spoke about the cardiac glycosides and the mechanism of action now we'll be continuing with the pharmacological actions so under the pharmacological actions let's see under cardiac what are the uses so under this cardiac it can be used for myocardial contractibility it increases what is seen is it increases the foc that is force of contraction and this is nothing but positive inotropic effect and it is more prominent in the failing heart and it also increases the cardiac output as well and decreases the pulmonary congestion and also the systemic venous pressure and what is noticed is the diastolic size of heart is reduced and the when the size of the heart is reduced also the muscle fiber length is also reduced and because of this there is decrease in oxygen requirement of myocardium because the size is decreasing and because of um, all this we can conclude that a digitalized heart has more can do more work with less of energy with decreased energy so this is an important concept that needs to be known and next we'll also be looking at hr that is nothing but the heart rate and talking about the heart rate in patients with the congestive cardiac failure digitalit it reduces the heart rate so there is a decrease in heart rate and that is the negative inotropic effect negative inotropic effect and another point to note is there uh, in small doses it decreases heart rate by stimulation of vagus so there is stimulation of vagus and in toxic doses it increases the sympathetic activity so in very huge toxic doses it increases the sympathetic activity whereas in lower doses it does not so now quickly summarizing this page we have spoken about the cardiac glycosides so i'll be talking about the summary and cardiac glycosides so talking about the functions cardiac we spoke about under cardiac there is the myocardial contractibility so this is nothing but the myocardial contractibility under this we have spoken about that it increases the force of contraction so there is increase in force of contraction there is nothing but the positive inotropic effect and the, the effect is more prominent in failing heart and it contract contraction is full and complete and other thing to note is that there is increase in cardiac output as well and the diastolic size diastolic size is reduced and along with the muscle fiber size so the oxygen demand is less okay and due to this the heart functions better because the o2 demand is less so in a digitalized heart the demand is less so the heart is functioning best next will be i also spoke about the heart rate that is in case of heart rate in ccf that is in low doses it decreases heart rate whereas in toxic doses it increases the heart rate and this uh, decrease in heart rate is nothing but due to the stimulation of the vagus okay now i uh, will be moving on the next point to focus on will be the electro physiological actions so under electro physiological actions it decreases the automaticity as well as it increases the resting membrane potential increases resting membrane potential by the vagal action in the av node and the atria and it prolongs the erp and decreases the conduction velocity in av node as well 
and this may lead to bradycardia and AV block as well as AV block. At higher concentration, it increases the automaticity in cardiac tissue, increases automaticity as well. Now looking at the ECG, it produces prolonged PR interval as well as inversion of T wave and depression of ST segment as well. So these are important points to know and other uh, we can look at extra uh, cardiac actions. So under this extra cardiac actions what is noticed is the digitalis it produces prolonged PR interval and also I have repeated this so I will be looking at the gastrointestinal tract in the gastrointestinal tract the digitalis it produces anorexia common symptoms anorexia nausea as well as vomiting and in case of kidney it can result in diuresis nothing but increased urine output and in case of the CNS that is the central nervous system what is seen is it causes central sympathetic stimulation so stimulation as well as confusion and blurring vision as well as disorientation now uh, quickly looking at some points of the summary of what we have discussed so we started with the electrophysiological actions two physiological actions so under this uh, it increases the resting membrane potential by acting on the vagus vagal action and the action is on the atria and the AB node what is seen is this uh, prolongation of ERP and also the decreased conduction velocity in AB node node and due to this there can be bradycardia as well as AV block increased ERP as well as there is bradycardia and there is AV block moving further at uh, higher concentration higher concentration what is seen is uh, decoxin it can increase the automaticity in the cardiac uh, tissue by direct action as well as increasing sympathetic activity so then it can also result in atrial and ventricular arrhythmias as well and talking about the ECG what is noticed is this uh, prolongation of the PR interval as well as inversion of T wave and depression of ST segment I'll repeat there is inversion of T wave there is uh, also depression of the ST segment and the prolongation of PR interval so PR interval is prolonged now uh, moving further we have summarized this now looking at some of the actions in the GIT CNS I have already mentioned here so I will be giving a recap so here uh, looking at GIT in GIT it can result in a nausea vomiting anorexia nausea vomiting and anorexia nausea vomiting and looking at the kidney it can result in diuresis that is nothing but increased um, urine output looking at uh, CNS what it does is uh, it causes central sympathetic stimulation and also it results in blurring of vision as well as disorientation confusion as well now uh, moving ahead we'll be looking at other pharmacokinetics of this drug in case of digoxin it is the it's very common and very it's used and mostly given by oral route and as usual many the food it can interfere interferes and looking at it is distributed widely distribution is wide 
as well as it is concentrated in the heart liver as well as the kidney and the skeletal muscles other point to note is that it crosses crosses the bbb that's nothing but the blood brain barrier and it is excreted in the urine unchanged and in case of the patients with renal failure it should be administered with proper monitoring and should be monitored as well looking at some of the adverse effects adverse effects of digoxin it can result in case of git it can result similar one that's nausea vomiting anorexia as well as uh, gi irritation can also be resulted and looking at the cns effect it can include headache confusion restlessness disorientation as well as uh, skin rash and gynecomastia can also be present okay now quickly we'll just summarize what you have done in this page and it goes like this we have spoken about the pharmacokinetics of digoxin we have seen that food interferes with it as well as uh, it is very commonly used drug and it is concentrated in the heart liver and the kidney and skeletal muscles it crosses the bbb that is blood brain barrier and it is excreted unchanged in urine so it is excreted unchanged in urine and looking at the dosage of digoxin it is necessary for patients with uh, renal failure so in such a case the dose adjustment should be done and looking at uh, the adverse effects adverse effects are nothing but in case of the git that is nothing but the gastrointestinal tract it can result in anorexia nausea and vomiting that are common and as well as gi stimulation and uh, gi irritation as when looking at cns it can cause confusion restlessness uh, irritation disorientation headache and it can result in skin rash as well as gynecomastia so now uh, moving ahead we'll be uh, looking at the cardiac effect so in case of the cardiac effect the cardiac what it does is uh, it may cause arrhythmias arrhythmias and it can also result in ventricular premature beats as well as pulses by gemini and ventricular tachycardia and it also causes av block av block atrial fibrillation atrial flutter even severe bradycardia so these are some points that need to be known and looking at factors in case of digitalis toxicity what are the factors contributing to it so if you look at age increase in age they are more susceptible and looking at the root uh, the iv it has more risk so iv is associated with increased risk and also the hypokalemia so in case of hypokalemia there is binding of digoxin to the na plus k plus atps and it causes increases in toxicity so it helps in its toxicity case of hypercalcemia and hypo magnesemia here it's hyper here it's hypo in such a case there is also digit toxin toxicity and moving further uh, looking at uh, hypothyroidism thyroidism hyperthyroidism 
as well as hypoxia and the uh, renal failure and myocarditis so even they result in digitalis toxicity now i'll be quickly summarizing what has been told so we have started with the cardiac effects that is in case of cardiac it can result in summary first so it can result in cardiac arrhythmias as well as ventricular premature beats pulses by gemini ventricular tachycardia av block atrial tachycardia atrial fibrillation as well as atrial flutter and can result in bradycardia now looking at the factors which affect we have seen that age increase in age contributes as well as the iv route is more uh, susceptible to risk and hypokalemia as well and hypercalcemia and hypomagnesemia also contribute and hyper or the hypothyroidism along with hypoxia and the renal failure and myocarditis all this it can leads to digitalis toxicity now uh, moving further i uh, will be looking at uh, treatment of uh, digitoxin digoxin toxicity so previously we spoke about digitalis toxicity this is digitalis as now we'll be looking at digoxin treatment toxicity so in such a case what happens is there is a shift of the patient to the icu so patient is shifted to icu and what is done is they stop digoxin and potassium depleting diuretics that's first so stop digoxin and potassium depleting diuretics preferably the this thing the thiazides and uh, loop diuretics and then potassium chloride is administered this can be through oral route as well as iv that is uh, intravenous route and next to the supraventricular arrhythmias are treated with oral or intravenous uh, propranolol so here there is supraventricular arrhythmias in such a case it's treated with oral iv propranolol next moving on to the iv lignocaine so here it's a drug of choice in case of ventricular arrhythmias and it has low incidence of toxicity incidence of toxicity and a rapid onset and short duration of action short duration of action as well so the action of ways of immediately after stopping infusion and there's no av nodal conduction activity as well uh, other point to note is that there's av block and bradycardia av block case of bradycardia so here what is done is a uh, treatment can be done with case with the atropin and also the cardiac pacing as well moving further in case of digoxin antibodies it is used in case of serious toxicity and it neutralizes the digoxin as well as the digitoxin and but um, only problem is it is very expensive now quickly summarizing what has been discussed here we have spoken with the digoxin toxicity in case of digoxin toxicity what we can see is firstly we should ship them to the intensive care unit and then it should be stopped immediately as well as the potassium depleting diuretics also should be stopped next we can administer potassium chloride that is uh, orally or iv and supraventricular arrhythmias are treated with the preparations of 
uh, the propranolol propranolol is given and in case of IV lignocaine the drug of choice is for uh, ventricular arrhythmias and why is it used this is IV lignocaine because of its low toxicity uh, rapid onset onset is good and short duration short duration as well and there's no AV nodal conduction velocity so there is so it does not interfere with the AV block does not um, increase the AV block and um, looking at the AV block and also the Brady arrhythmias here it is treated with atropine as well as cardiac pacing now uh, looking at the digoxin antibodies here uh, what we are seeing is there is it neutralizes the toxicity and it is used in case of severe toxic conditions this is where it's used now uh, moving further we'll be um, focusing on some uh, important drug interactions as well so looking at the drug interactions in the drug interactions uh, we'll be looking at a uh, cholestyramine styramine or uh, the cholestipol along with the digoxin cholestyramine and cholestipol with digoxin so what is found is that there are it binds to the cardiac glycosides in gut and it reduces the absorption decreases the absorption absorption this it binds to the decreases absorption and it binds to because it binds to cardiac glycosides in the gut now uh, moving further we'll be looking at beta blocker and verapamil with the digoxin so in such a case there is additive depressive effect so there is depressive effect effect so there is increase in depressive effect and due to this uh, the effect is on SA and also the AV node and the AV block is increased it's precipitated now looking at uh, moving on to the thiazide uh, loop diuretic as well as the digoxin what we have seen is a hypokalemia caused by diuretics so this hypokalemia caused by uh, diuretics so it potentiates the digoxin toxicity so it increases the digoxin toxicity and the hypokalemia increasing the binding this hypokalemia it increases the binding of digoxin to the Na plus K plus ATPase as well. Now, moving, we'll be looking at calcium and digoxin. So, in short, the calcium it increases the digoxin toxicity. And moving on, we are also looking at digoxin with the sympathomimetic or uh, the succinylcholine so here there is cardiac arrhythmias are more common cardiac arrhythmias are more common in patients on digoxin now quickly summarizing what we have just learned we will be looking at we saw the drug interactions some important drug interactions so we saw cholesteramine or cholestipol in case of with digoxin so in such a case mm, what is happening is because it binds to the cholestyramine and cholestipol binds to the cardiac glucosides in the gut so there is a reduce it reduces its absorption and looking at uh, beta blocker or verapamil with the digoxin in such a case there is a additive depressive effect so this increase in depressive effect that is found and then moving on to the thiazide loop diuretic along with digoxin in such a case there is hypokalemia that is caused by diuretics 
and they potentiate the digoxin toxicity. So in such a case, there's hypokalemia caused by diuretics. And this hypokalemia, it increases the binding of hypokalemia, it increases binding of digoxin to the Na plus K plus ATPs. So this is an important point. In case of hypokalemia, there's always uh, increased digoxin to the uh, Na plus K plus ATPs. Moving further, we looked on calcium that it increases the toxicity as well as uh, digoxin with the sympathomimetic as well as succinyl choline. It uh, causes cardiac arrhythmias as well. Now, uh, moving further, we'll be looking at uh, a flowchart which uh, depicts the uses. So this is about digitalis. So in case of uh, uses, firstly I'll talk about uses first. It's used in CCF, it's used in atrial fibrillation, it's used in atrial flutter, fibrillation, it's used in par paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia as well. And looking at CCF, it is useful in patients with uh, low output. So in patients with low decreased output and also in with associated with atrial fibrillation and also looking at the beneficial effect in case of heart failure is due to positive ionotropic effect is seen ionotropic effect and looking at atrial fibrillation it is the most common cardiac arrhythmias common cardiac arrhythmia and the atrial heart beat the atria beat or at a rate of uh, around 350 to 600 per minute and digitalis has both the uh, direct and indirect actions on the AV node and it depresses the AV node by increasing the ERP this we have seen in a lot of places that uh, there's decrease in AV node activity due to increase in ERP and also there's a decrease in the conduction velocity as well and here the verapamil as well as the propranolol it can be used in case of atrial fibrillation and talking about the atrial flutter in specific it uh, the atria it beats rapidly about 300 per minute and it controls the uh, ventricular rate digitalis controls the ventricular rate by decreasing the av conduction so av conduction is reduced and looking at paroxysmal a supraventricular tachycardia in such a case the heart rate is about uh, close to 200 150 to 200 just an estimate and um, preferred drug can be adenosine as well as uh, propranolol or verapamil propranolol as well as verapamil and in case of uh, uh, digoxin it has a slow onset slow onset and it is not suitable for acute therapy it is preferred in case of PSVT if there is uh, also an associated heart failure and it terminates arrhythmias by it acts on the because of the vagal tone it increases the vagal tone due to this there is a termination of the arrhythmias as well now quickly uh, looking at uh, the FX uh, in terms of flowchart so if you look at digitalis it causes positive ionotropic effect and due to this there is uh, increase in cardiac output and it improves the circulation increase in circulation and due to this there is uh, compensatory uh, sympathetic overactivity and also there is uh, increase in tissue perfusion as well as there is correction of hypoxia as well here if you see there is increase in uh, renal blood flow and also there is uh, increase in sodium as well as water excretion so these are the points we discussed here and now uh, we'll quickly summarize what we have discussed so here uh, nothing but we have just discussed about uh, digitalis and where it is used so in case of digitalis uh, it is used in case of ccf which is natal fibrillation which is natal flutter as well as paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and in case of CCF, it is nothing but used in case of low output failure and also it is associated with atrial fibrillation. And looking at atrial fibrillation, it uh, the most common atrial arrhythmias 
causes most common am cardiac arrhythmia and um, the beats it beats about 300 to 600 per minute and uh, there is always uh, depression of the av node this needs to be known av node and there's increase in erp so this is a fact that needs to be known and looking at the paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia in such a case uh, psvt is for its your digoxin is used if there's association with heart failure as well and it also terminates arrhythmias in case by uh, by increasing the vagal tone and we quickly looked upon the the flow chart that is nothing but there's increase in inotropic effect there's increase in cardiac output so there's also improve in circulation increase in circulation and it increases the tissue perfusion as well there's increase in renal blood flow and also increase in the sodium and the water excretion and due to this there's a relief of the edema as well as dyspnea okay so now uh, moving further we'll also be looking on the small note on dopamine so we know what dopamine and we have already studied if you have paid attention we have also spoken about dopamine in the previous videos and dopamine it is nothing but a catecholamine so it is nothing but a dose dependent hemodynamic effect is carried out dynamic effect and at low doses it is it dilates the renal so what it does it dilates the uh, renal uh, mesenteric as well as coronary blood vessels so how is this carried out by acting on the d1 receptors and if you look at dopamine it increases the gfr as well as the urine output and it stimulates the b1 receptors also in moderate doses in case of moderate doses it also stimulates the beta 1 receptors and increases the myocardial contractibility as well as the increases the cardiac output but you can see that tachycardia is less prominent and in case of stimulation of dopaminic receptors there's also increase in GFR that is noticed and it can be used in case of where is it used so use it is used in case of uh, cardiogenic shock as well as acute heart failure with renal impairment it improves both the cardiac functioning as well as improves the uh, renal functioning and at higher concentration it causes uh, vasoconstriction that is increased concentration it can cause a vasoconstriction and uh, increase in afterload increases afterload and reduces the blood flow to the renal mesenteric and vital organs and looking at uh, i have spoken about small dose medium dose as well as um, high dose so let me just tell you the approximate values so by uh, low dose i mean approximately maybe less than 2 mcg per kg per minute whereas uh, in case of moderate i mean by 2 to 5 mcg per kg per minute and by high doses high concentration i meant uh, 10 greater than 10 mcg per kg per minute so by this greater than 10 mcg we have seen that it can uh, help with the uh, generalized vasoconstriction as well and it increases the afterload and as well as the uh, renal blood flow uh, and uh, also to the mesenteric and vital organs so now um, i'll just quickly summarize what i've been told here so now uh, i have spoken about just dopamine here so as we know dopamine um, it is a uh, catecholamine catecholamine and it has dose dependent hemodynamic effect so it is totally on dose if you increase the dose it has a particular effect if you minimize the dose it has a particular effect so it's nothing but how does it act it acts on the d1 receptors and there are uh, you can say there is a small dose moderate dose as well as high dose so here uh, we can 
approximately tell it's less than 2 here it's about 2 to 5 here it's greater than 10 so this is how it is uh, generally classified and in case of uh, 2 to 5 it stimulates the b tone receptors as well and uh, due to this it increases the uh, myocardial contractibility as well as the cardiac output whereas the uh, tachycardia is uh, less prominent uh, and now uh, moving ahead with the uh, other point that is in case if it is high that is greater than 10 mcg per kg in uh, such a case there's a generalized uh, vasoconstriction generalized uh, vasoconstriction and there's an increase in afterload and it reduces the uh, blood flow to the renal mesenteric and vital organs so here the point is it decreases the uh, blood flow so blood flow is do not get confused it decreases the blood flow to the uh, renal mesenteric and vital organs now that's uh, you have summarized this page now moving ahead we will be uh, looking at some phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors quick light on that as well phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors in such a case uh, we have enamrenon as well as milrenon so here uh, they are nothing but the uh, selective phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors and what they do is they increase the CAMP level they exert both positive inotropic tropic as well as vasodilator actions and administered intravenously and what it does it increases the cardiac output and decreases afterload as well and it's used for a short term of uh, severe uh, heart failure and looking at the adverse effect what it does is it can lead to common effects such as nausea vomiting arrhythmias as well as thrombocytopenia as well as hepatotoxicity and looking at milrenon it is a uh, point to note is Milrenon, it is uh, more potent than enam renon and it does not produce thrombocytopenia so this point needs to be known now quickly looking at the summary of this page we have spoken about the pe3 inhibitors and naming a few examples that is uh, enam renon as well as milrenon and one point we have seen is that milrenon it is uh, increased it is more potent compared to that of the enamrenon so milrenon is more potent than the imandrenon and does not produce thrombocytopenia so there is no thrombocytopenia now uh, moving further uh, we have seen the PDE3 inhibitors that it increases the CAMP camp levels and it acts it has positive inotropic as well as it has the vasodilator effects and it is administered mainly iv it increases the cardiac output and it decreases the afterload as well it can used as a short-term treatment of severe heart failure so severe heart failure it is a short-term treatment that needs to be known and adverse effects can be nausea, vomiting, arrhythmias, thrombocytopenia, as well as hepatotoxicity. And looking at uh, milrenon, it is more potent than imunamrenon, and uh, as mentioned earlier, it does not cause thrombocytopenia. So, great, now I'll be continuing. We'll be looking at some arrhythmia drugs and i think i'll continue it um, in the next video so thanks for watching in case you like uh, please do give a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and uh, thank you have a good day